Yeah, this is Bang Bang Wheel Shot. Yeah, sorry I lost you last time, but uh, fucking dishwasher, washing machine, thumb will dryer, all the gear, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? All grrr. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah, I want to go back to you a little bit when I was a YP and a bolster boy, yeah? I'll tell you why, yeah, because, like, I remember, I remember being going to my YP, yeah, and it was like a bit fucking, it was weird, it was in the scrubs. There's a lot of noise in there and this, that, and the other. But I remember going around the wings, when we used to walk around the wings, yeah, and uh, look at the, they used to put cards outside, your card that you was nicked for, yeah, the, and your sentence, or this, that, and the other. But it's, I mean, come on, you, you imagine, yeah, this is the truth, yeah. They used to tell you exactly, and people in the nick tell you exactly that you're what you're in for. If you was in for arm robbery, it'd have on a card, arm robbery, four years, six years, 10 years. GBH, six years, four years, 10 years, whatever it be, yeah? And you'd also have sex offenders. Sex offender, rapist, you think I'm joking? This is how it should be. This is how it should be today. In them days, they didn't really look after them as such as they do today. It was a lot easier to get hold of these paedophilias and paedophiles and people that fuck about with women, yeah? Easier to get hold of them in them days than what it is now, yeah? And we used to plot up on people, plot them up as they come in out there, but most of them, they didn't look after them as such, yeah? They had them on the card, what they was in for, but they had them on the ones, yeah? So they had them around the screws. And as a YP, and as a bolster boy, the screws are a bit lively. Especially in them days, in the 60s, late 60s, early 70s. In them days, well, I'm telling you, screws were fucking screws, mate. They was big, big men. They'd have a fight with you, and they'd fight over fight with you, and were only YPs and bolster boys, you remember that? But I remember some people in there, mate, real bad, bad, bad paedophiles and bad, bad rapists on the ones and you're trying to get hold of them, yeah? You should try and get a job down the stairs where you mop the landings, mop down the stairs, all around the recess and all that, because you know they've got to come out and slop out. They didn't come out the same time as us, but it did tell you on their, on their card what they was nicked for. So you know you could get them, you could get hold of these people, maybe sometime in the day. You know what I mean? Because you all had to get them out and then start a punch up. What we should do, when I was in there for a bit of time, was to get together and say, right, what we're gonna do, when they're out on their exercise, or when they're, no, sorry, when they're out doing their, playing their little games and what that have you, because there weren't much games to play in them days, yeah? But when they're out doing their bits and pieces, We'll start a white fight upstairs and because you weren't allowed downstairs, yeah? You weren't allowed down to run down the stairs. But what have you done? What have you had a fight? We'd have a fight upstairs in the freezing the fours, and the screws don't run up the fucking stairs. Then you have a lot of run down the other stairs, the stairs that you're not supposed to come down, the concrete stairs. The concrete stairs that go up when you get your food, but we just go run down there and bash them up, mate, and bash them up and really hurt them. And the screws go up, shouting and screaming upstairs, big punch up upstairs. It'd be all bollocks, but obviously so someone's going to get nicked for it. Someone's going to lose remission, because in them days, you lost remission. But you know you could get hold of them screws, them, 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 them paedophiles and rapists and kitty offenders and all them sort of people, and cut them. We used to cut them with uh, toothbrushes. You know toothbrush? We used to cut them with a toothbrush. We used to melt the toothbrush, right, and get hold of the guy in the stores. The guy in the stores is a bit... Funny, because he was a screws boy, yeah? He was a, he was a person who, who the screws loved, yeah? But you could get hold of him, give him a little tobacco, give you a couple of razor blades, yeah? We should split the blades in half, melt melt the toothbrush, the end of the toothbrush, and put it in, half the blade. Put it in the, in the toothbrush, go down there, whoop, across their arses, cut them their arses. Don't cut their faces, because there's no one cutting their faces. They cut their face, they got a scar. You cut their arses, mate, they can't sit down. They can't sit down. As they sit down, it splits. The stitches split open. So if you cut their fucking asses really, really bad, they're in a lot of bad, bad way for a long time. And when you cut their asses, mate, 
Listen, you cut their faces, they become tough. They look tough, and they think they're big time Charlie potatoes. They become something that they ain't. So don't cut their faces. Leave their faces out of it. Cut their ass. Really cut them. We used to cut their ass as bad, bad. I mean, it's only a, 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 not even a quarter of an inch. But what cut them bad, mate? Two. Sometimes someone will put two in them, rip their ass to pieces. You're up and across, not too deep. You can't really go to the arches because there's a lot of muscle on, on, on the arse anyway. You know, rip it, rip them, rip them right open, you know what I mean? So they'll be rushed outside to the hospital because you've got Duke, Duke Kane Hospital just down the road. They'd be, be rushed out there, you know what I mean? And mate, we used to, we used to make a, when I say make a mess of them, we used to make a big mess of them, mate, with the arses to pieces. The screws would be going upstairs, a big punch up. Then we run up the back stairs and get in ourselves. Listen, people are going to get nicked for it, we knew that. We knew that the screws were going to come in, the cells go mad, you know, all the, all the paedophiles, all them rapists are downstairs, got cut to pieces, they'd be grasping up anyway. We know that, you know, but sometimes a couple of my powers have pillowcases over there, every little holes in it, but, you know, it ain't that easy, you know what I mean? You get some, <laughs> you get some feel good card away, put a pillowcase over the red and the eyes are on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes around the other side and they panic in and then they put it around and it's one away you know oh it's funny you know some of the things that, as, as my wife and my boss were boy it was crazy the things that used to happen you know when we used to have a fight in the in, in, in the YP thing it was like it was good you know it was like proper 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 fights you know what I mean we go to the recess they had guard people watching out this that and the other you know what I mean making they'd have a bit of trouble down the other end so the screws will be rushing down there, but you know, might be lose cutting days of mission. But if we're having a fight and get captured, we'd lose about 14 days, you know what I mean? But we could go in a recess and have a proper fight. No blades and all that, you know what I mean? But go and have a proper fight, a fisty fisty fight. And you know, and I, and, and, and me, I just said guy this guy from Birmingham could have a right um, could have a right fight, you know. And uh, we had a fight when I first got there. And it, uh, he beat me in a way. He beat me in a way. I've got to say that he beat me. And uh, but we, we, we got the respect that they give me because I'd only been in a couple of days, and they, you know, tipped all my food up in the air. So I knew that I had to that, that I had to fight one of them. You know what I mean? I knew that anyway. I'm not going to cower down. So they took the piss out of me. So I had to fight with them. I got beat. You know, I didn't get beat bad. I got beat. Good fight of the kid, and uh, that was it. You know, and then. We become pals, lots and lots of respect. And, uh, you know, uh, don't worry about that, mate. He, he knew, he knew that it's the best, second best fight he's ever had with me, mate. The, the best second fighter he's ever had with me, mate. He knew this is, this guy's going to fight. And I'll give, him a, I'll give him a good go, but I got beat. He was a good fighter, a good boxer in his day, this kid. Anyway, um, he came from Birmingham. There was quite a few of them all got done through um, an affray. They all got bundles of bird. I think they all got HMP, which is which is a life sentence. You know, there were some kids in there from um, Cam. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, oh, I forget the name of the common. Uh, over or uh, not? Oh, anyway, they all got done for a big um, thing with uh, these um, paedophiles trying to get hold of the boys. Yeah, cut them, got hold of the boys, and took them from the toilet and doing things. And they all get together. Said, "Look, we got to sort these things out." And um, and they did, mate. They'd uh, got all this, um, these paedophiles, these puffs, these geezers in the toilet, and uh, they'd done the business on them, mate. They'd stuck all things up their arses, boom, ant, boom, stick handles, and everything, you know what I mean? They didn't muck about, and they killed them internally, you know? They didn't kill them externally, they killed them internally, mate. They plunged their arses so bad with all sorts of objects that they, they, bled, they bled to death. They bled to death. And, you know, and, and, and that's how it's. Um, and that's really, in, in a way, uh, you know, like, come on, these are only kids, and you know, they all got HMP, these boys, not the Birmingham lot, I want about the guys from London, and nice, mate, proper nice kids, proper nice kids, all good footballers, you know what I mean, all good footballers, but one of them got sexually abused, really bad in the toilet, and they went back, come on, it happened to me, and my brother would have told me this guy that done it years ago, he would have died when I come out of prison, as, uh, you know, as easy as that, but he didn't, and he's, he's dead and he died a long time ago. But, and come, come on, there's people out there, you mustn't, I mean, when we're YPs and Borsal boys, you don't give a fuck. You don't care, you don't care about 
uh, authority and this, that and the other. Okay, me ballstool was the best time of my life, the fittest time of my life. You go for all your colours. The fittest time of my life, mate. I mean, in there, mate, they they made proper men out of you, mate. And when you come out of that prison, when you made make, make a meet with your pals, they made armed robbers. Ballstools and YPs made armed robbers. They come out, mate. You come out regimental. You know the time. You're looking at the time. They come out so fit. So fit, mate. Honestly. So fit. You run your bare feet, mate. You could run across glass in your bare feet. You're that fast. You couldn't ever cut you that fast. Honestly, you go across the glass. You run across the glass. You're so fast, you don't cut your feet. But I know it's a bit over the top, but I'm just saying, that's how fit you become. Mate, fit. And don't forget, you're training five, six days a week. You're training for three hours, two hours, for an hour, all the time. One hour, burpees, leg thrusts, alternate leg thrusts, star jumps. Mate, it's all you're doing. All day. All day. It's all you're doing. Running on the spot. Press-ups, burpees. Oh, what? You know what I mean? And, 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 and whatever, whatever exercise, whatever exercise that you found out to do, that would be the exercise then PTIs would make you do. They'd be watching you, everyone on, on the yard, they'd watch you and you'd be fucking on the yard, pissing with rain. You'd be out there by yourself with them, Pissing me around, they'll be watching you do your whatever you've got to do for an hour. I'm telling you, mate, you think I'm joking? You asked any Bolster boy, you know any Bolster boy, what his Bolsters were like? I had the worst one, Portland and Rochester. They were the two I had, and they was, mate, Rochester, Rochester, Rochester was like a recall centre, and that was bad, mate. You got punched around the face and everything. But, but, you're men, you're kids. But you're men, you didn't mind it, mate. Not that you might, you know, didn't mind it, but you wasn't babies. You never cried like you do today. Oh! You know, you never cry like you do today. Kids that back in school, kids that get a little sentence now, they're little babies, you know what I mean? Go to prison, don't go, go in the gym. Oh, I need steroids, I need creatine. They fucking wankers, do you know what I mean? It pisses me off, mate, you know, like in the, proper people, do you know what? But YPs, mate, I love my YP and I love my ball story. It was so, so hard. You know what I mean? When we, when we, made, when we made it to someone, when someone was in trouble, when someone caused trouble, sorry, but when someone caused trouble, we made it our fucking responsibility to sort it out, yeah? And we would sort it out, mate. We'd get that geezer out. We would punch his lights out. We was young kids that we didn't care for these bully baits, these bully, they might have called us bullies, but we stuck together as a, as a firm, as bolster boys, as YPs, and you do the business. Miss, mate, when I was a YP, this guy called, he died, someone talked to me his name the other day, so Reese, anyway, he's dead now. Mickey, 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 Mickey something, uh, Mickey, Mickey, uh, oh, Anyway, I was away with this guy, Welsh guy. Five foot two, five foot three. Listen, this guy was could fight, mate. This guy could fight. Proper, proper boxer. I don't think, personally, I don't think anybody, anybody, including myself, could beat this guy. Could beat this guy. He was like another Rocky Marciano. Honestly, he was like unbelievable, unbelievable. I mean, he was like, you know, you see him in the gym. He had bags in the gym. He had a bag in the gym. Uh, you see him in the gym on a bag, mate. He was like bobbing and weaving all the time, you know, ran, he, he, and he hit from all angles, and the gears could bang. I had him on a powerlifting team with us, yeah? Um, and this guy could squat some silly weights, mate. He had legs, massive legs. And he could squat some silly, silly weights. Weights you'd never believe, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, and powerhouse. Me and him a couple of times have had bad wells on the football field, you know, because he's charging me, I'm charging him. You know, I'm smashing him in the legs, he's smashing me in the legs. And it comes to the stage that one of us is going to get bashed up. It never did, though. It never did. I found it'd be me. <laughs> I don't know, because, do you know, like, 
you know, like honestly, them days, them days, mate, the best days ever. The best days is prison, we you know. It's crazy people think out there that them days are the best days. But they made a man of everybody that I know that went in Ballstall come out a man. A man. Went in as a boy, crying, come out as a man, smiling, mate. Smiling. You could run from Portland, Portland Bill, all the way home if you had to, because that's how fit you was. That's how fit you was. When you got out of there, mate, you felt a million dollars. You felt a million dollars. And you got together and you thought, let's, let's go for it, mate. Let's go for it. No one's going to touch us. We just keep doing it. Just kept doing little robberies, little bags, taking little five grand here, ten grand here, and getting away with it. Fit. Everything by the time we was mustered at it, mate, and they could not catch us. It's only later in my years, in my, they caught us really. YP, balls from YP, come out of YP, that's when I started getting big birds, you know. Um, I met um, a couple of nice guys in uh, in my YP, I've already told you, a guy called Alan Pounty. Uh, his uh, dad used to put him through the windows of houses and he used to go in there and rob them. Cut, and at one time he got in there and a woman come down the stairs and uh, he hit her with something and killed her. They got away, obviously so, but they got caught. Uh, the old man got a life and he, the young boy got a YP. Um, the young boy, Alan, was a dangerous, dangerous man. I mean, I keep saying people are dangerous because they are, they're in prison, you know, and you go, oh, he's dangerous, he's dangerous, but they are. They're in prison, mate. You get people who've been in prison for murder, not just murdering their wives or their kids. I want not about them ones. I want not about people that murder people properly. Do you know what I mean? Murder people properly, mate. They're the ones you've got to be careful of. Dangerous. You imagine, you imagine, you imagine, right, you're coming off the road, going into a prison cell, two-handed or three-handed, more like three-handed, there's two other guys in there with you, you ain't got a clue who they are, you ain't got a clue what they've done, and you're going to go to bed as a sleep with them two in the cell. There's no way, if you was outside, that you'd have someone coming to your house, knock on the door and come in your bedroom and sleep in your bedroom on the, or on the floor or whatever. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't know who it was. But prison, they don't care. They put you in, in a cell with anybody. You ain't got a clue who they are, what they're up to. You ain't got a clue that this man is reading all your letters. You ain't got a clue that this man is a fucking bad, 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 bad rapist that rapes kids, that rapes women and they put them in the same cell as you. This geezer is one of the guys, this guy is one of the guys, as a bolster boy, as a YP, someone cut him down the face. Instead of cutting his ass, they cut him down the face. He's now got a big scar down his face. He looks a proper gangster. He looks a proper hard man because he's got a scar down his face. You've got to remember, a lot of these people have got scars down their face. They got it in prison. And they're not nice people, a lot of them. So be careful. When you see these people with scars down their face, why? If you don't got a clue who done it, it might be a member of the family. It might be someone you know done it. But when they're in prison, they get cut down their faces for a reason. Nine times out of ten, they're bad bosses. So be careful, yeah? Anyway, you're in a cell. In a cell, getting in there, this guy's got a big scar down his face. Oh, he's a bit lively. Okay, now, this guy's got a big scar down his face, and he's talking like big time Charlie Potatoes. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like when I done. He's more like a paedophile. He's more like a rapist. So be careful. You've got to be careful. And this is what they do, mate. They put you in with these people. Listen, these people... Right, they bang you up behind your door. How can they really bang people up that are killed kids, that are paedophile little kids, that are rape women, that are bash women up? And they shut the door, they shut the door, 
and they go home to their wife and their kids, don't even think about it. That's part of my job. I write a letter, I write a thing, I sign a form that I mustn't tell anybody, must keep a secret. Come on. The fucking hell, mate. Tell me. We had screws. Not in my YP, not in my ballstool. In my prison. I told you about when they told me about the Indians, yeah? We had screws, mate. We had screws. If the screw knew, if a screw knew that you was the one of the ones that done this and done that, there'd be world, a lot of them screws in there. A lot of them would tell you. A lot of them wouldn't. They're arseholes. They're the ones that are the arseholes. The grumps, the wife and kids, and the rapists, and they just bang the door for them. I remember being on the hot plate. All right? I'd already bashed someone up really bad, broke his jaw, fucking smashed his face to pieces. This guy, Dennis, smashed him to pieces because he fucking bullied me. He bashed me up in Albany, done me, knocked me out, about four or five of them, stabbed me with a fucking rake and stabbed me all sorts of things, yeah? Really, not wanting to kill me. I was lucky to be alive, mate. But I got him in the, in, in the scrubs. I'll tell a lie, it was in Wandsworth. I got him in Wandsworth and I fucking nearly killed him. I nearly killed him, mate. I hit him so hard on the jaw, I smashed it in pieces. And he bullied someone on his landing, and the geese he bullied <laughs> come in his cell, come in, my, in the recess after I'd done what I'd done, and kicked him all around the gaff. Nothing to do, man, mate. Do what you got to do. Kick him fucking around the head. Do what you got to do. He's a bully, right? Anyway, this screw, you'd never believe, mate. This screw called me in the toilet. He said, why can I talk to you, mate? He said, look, I know what you've done. I know you've done that, geezer. He said, but I'll tell you something. There's someone 10 times worse than this geezer's here, and he's on the force, and he's the worst rapist, paedophile you could ever imagine. And he's walking around like a gangster. But you've got to be careful, because a lot of these screws would tell you to do something who they don't like, who's give them a bit of grief and get you to do the dirty work. So you make yourself a bit busy on it. You find out, yeah, 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 man. You get someone in the cell, maybe to nick a letter, find out something. You find out something or you get someone you know, like I've got someone I know, right, to go in the record thinking thing, sort things out. They do. They can do all this, mate. Don't worry about that. It's about money, right? Ben the Jumi, I told you about. Multi, multi, multi-millionaire, got done for the big arms deal. He could go and find out things for me, and he found out for me, he was a, He said, yeah, the guy's a bad, bad paedophile, a bad rapist, and he, he bashes, he was the big time, this geezer, thought he was someone special. Thought he could have a well. He was going, oh, mate. He frightened people in his, his, his repair, his way he looked, his appearance, he looked as if he could have a whip of well. Didn't have no scars in his face, had a bit of a flat nose, a bit of dodgy old ears like mine, but looked like he could have a well. So people left him alone, he shouted about, but when the screw told me and I found out all about it, mate, he was in trouble. He was in so much shit, mate. Me and a mate of mine went upstairs, that's about two of us, we want to keep an eye out what's going on. Me and a mate of mine went upstairs to the fours, he was coming out, the dinner's being called. He was coming out. We didn't know whether or not he'd go to the toilet, but we was clocking him, right? He didn't come to the toilet. We clocked him, get his food, running his cell, rushed in his cell. I smashed him to pieces with a leg of fucking wooden leg. I smashed him so many times, mate, around the face. I didn't give a fuck. Around the arms, around the elbows, around the kneecaps, around the ankles. Smashed and smashed and smashed it as hard as I could. This guy, this guy would never ever touch another child. This guy would never ever touch another woman. This guy would never hurt anybody again because he wouldn't be able to walk, mate. He wouldn't be able to walk. He'd be very, I, I doubt very much if he could hold something in his hand. I smashed it to pieces. He didn't scream. Do you know why he never screamed? Because he was smashed to pieces before, he got hit across the head, hit that floor so hard, oh, mate, 
we just kept smashing him and smashing him, treading all over him. My mate of Black Geyser, Leslie, but oh, believe me, when he goes into one, he goes into one. He, the geezer, we come out of that cell. We come out of that cell. Listen, no matter what about screws, about cons, no one said a fucking word. No one said a word. No one. It never even come to a blink. Never nothing. But the guy I done, Dennis, he come about six, eight weeks later. His face looked like SDBs. He had all scaffolding around his face, all wedged up in his jaws and his there and everything. Scaffolding coming out here. He was on a, he was on a milk diet. He was on a water diet, and he was on a diet of fucking just water and soup and all that milk and all that. He couldn't eat. This guy nearly killed me in Albany. And he had to go. He had to go. If he didn't go, if he didn't go in prison, I'd have got him outside. You know what I mean? You can't let people do that. I knew where he come from. You can't let people do that, mate. Try to kill you. He tried to kill me in Albany. Not him. About four or five of them, right? And they set about me big time, mate, with all sorts of things. God and rates, God and forks, everything. They wanted to kill me. They stabbed me all around the body, mate, with just different things, yeah? And it's only because of rail, I'm strong, that they can save my bacon. You know what I mean? I rushed to the hospital. They rushed me across the water, mate, to save my bacon, to save my life. Yeah, anyway, this is Ray Bang Bang Hill. Uh, this is just a little story. I keep telling these little stories, hoping you're going to like them. I hope you're going to like them and subscribe to my channel. I know I keep saying that, like, and subscribe. <laughs> Listen, honestly, there's going to be a book in a minute, and it's going to be a good book. It's going to be the best book ever, mate. Please, I hope so, anyway. I'm going to try my hardest to make it a good book, yeah? Uh, I've got a surprise, hopefully, soon. A better surprise than, uh, than that. And um, uh, listen, out of everything bad in life, yeah? Out of everything bad in life, remember, at the end of it, there's something good. We all do bad things in our life. Listen, I'm telling these podcasts about all the bad things I've done. But a lot of these podcasts I do, even the one I'm doing now, you've got to realise that at the end of it, I didn't win. At the end of it, I got an IPP. I got put away for a long time. I lost my mum. I lost my dad. And I lost all my family. I talked to my sister, now Dinah. I talked to my brother, Keith. But the others I've lost. You know, I lost such a lot. You imagine losing everything because you've been in prison. You've got to remember, you're in there, you're lying in there on a fucking bed, wishing your DVDs and this, that and the other, and your bedspreads and all that. Who buys you that? Nine times out of ten, it's your mum. Your mum and your dad are more precious than anything else in this whole world, mate, believe it. We all do silly things. I didn't do silly things. I done robberies and got a lot of money. I was with someone, a big company, and got a lot of money. But it was all took from me. They took it from me. I worked hard and they took it from me. I've had a good life. <coughs> Sorry, I had houses. I had everything I wanted. I had good friends that I lost. My best friend was a guy called Mickey Gooch. He was my best mate ever. I've now got another mate. He's even better than that, Terry. He's my best, best mate. He looks after me like a brother, mate. He's like my brother, you know? Like, I'm like his big brother, you know what I mean? I'll give him a clump here and there because he deserves it. <laughs> no, I don't, no, I don't. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear, Terry, Terry, Terry. He hit me in the mouth. He hit, listen, I was a wimpy boy one day. I ain't been a wimpy for years. Wimpy, I said, I love wimpies. What about you, like wimpies? I was in the wimpy bar, yeah? Just drinking a milkshake. And he went, come on in, arm wrestle. And I went arm wrestle down the time, so quick. But the reaction he gave me, he punched me around the mouth. He said he slapped me. Listen, he broke my tooth. He cracked my tooth. I woke up in the morning in terrible pain, but the nerves are fucking gone. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> I could have killed him, yeah. I phoned him, mate. He said, well, don't do it. Don't play games with me, right? He's about five foot 
I don't know, maybe five foot three, five foot two. Maybe come and give him an inch, five foot three. Um, he's a nice, nice geezer. <laughs> five foot three. <laughs> Do you know what made me laugh? It really made me laugh, yeah. He got in his swimming pool. It's one, it's one depth all the way around. It's five foot five. It's deep. He got in it and he drowned. <laughs> He got in there and he drowned. He was a good swimmer, but he jumped, done something, and his leg buckled and he couldn't get up. He couldn't get up near the drown. He's five foot three, mate. Come on, how embarrassing is that? It ain't his fault. He's the only geezer I know, right, in 220, two 221, that wears wedges still. He used to wear wedges in the 60s and 70s. He wears wedges. He's like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, he wears wedges too. You know, there's a few, few, <laughs> there's a few actors that wear wedges. My mate Terry, he wears them too. He wears wedges, shoes, wedges on his boots and all that. It's no big thing. He's got socks that he wears, like with big thick things in them. So he makes you sort of a bit of taller. <laughs> ah, dear. He's gone to a dinner today. He's gone to a big dinner. Uh, he took two of his boys with him for this big dinner thing. He didn't take me. Oh, he wouldn't take me, would he? What am I? I'm on Ray Hill. He don't give a monkey's about me, really. He took his two boys to this dinner thing. He sent me a video, oh, not a video, a photograph of his boys eating food. Uh, nice kids, both nice boys. And uh, you can't see him. He ain't there. Do you know why? Because he can't sit at the table because he's too short. So they got to put him in this, this like an eye chair. I ain't joking. He's in like an eye chair because he's so short. He poor old Terry, eh? <laughs> he's in an eye chair. Oh dear. I see him driving a crane the other week, and I thought he's a baby in a crane. <laughs> What's that kid doing in the crane? <laughs> he jumps out. It takes him ten minutes to get out. He's got climbing ladders and chairs at the bottom so he don't fall over. Poor old Terry, but he's the best guy that I know. I've got a few pals. I've got a few pals, you know. I mean, I've got some good mates in my life. I've got Jamie Bennett. I've known Jamie Bennett for years. A good mate, come from Brentford. Um, everybody knows Jamie Bennett in Brentford. And everybody knows the Bennett family. But um, J Jamie and Jason and Duke, there's Duke and there's, there's quite a few brothers. I think there's about 10 of them. I'm sure there's about 10. I don't know how Pat made it, because Pat's a midget too. Ah, <laughs> oh, Pat, Pat. They all, mind you, they all look the same, so they're many Pats. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's Jamie Bennett, good mate of mine, mate. Good mate of mine. Um, he knows more about me than I do. He's been with me most of my life, as such. He's been around people that, 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 that are my mates, and big, big, Big people, mate. He was there at the time. And he knows all about it. I sometimes talk to him. He sometimes tells me this and tells me that. I've got another mate, Alec Jones. Alec Jones. Everybody knows Alec Jones, mate. Everybody who's everybody knows Alec Jones. Alec Jones, this guy can have it. This guy is one of the hardest men that I've ever known. And I've known some hard men in my life. This guy can fight, mate. This guy, if he bangs you on the chin, he's quite dangerous as well, Alex. He's dangerous as well. So a man who's dangerous and can fight is a dangerous man. He ain't afraid of no one. And I mean that, he ain't afraid of no one. And he's my pal. He's one of my best pals, Alex Jones. And I love him to death, all right, Al? He's a good mate at mine, Alex Jones. He's a good, good mate. I mean, I've got another guy called Fisherman. Fisherman is always on his boat fishing, never because there's no fish, but he's always on his boat fishing. I'm something is definitely wrong. <laughs> something is definitely wrong. He, why is he always on his boat? He's married to the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. She's an air stewardess, and he ain't with her. He definitely ain't gay. I don't know, he could be. He's had all his teeth white, he's had his hair done, and yet he's fishing on the boat. Something wrong with you, mate. Sort yourself up, Milo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sort yourself out, mate. Sort yourself out and get home and make more kids. His boys, he's got good boys. His boys look like film stars. They really do. I've got my old mate Christian. 
Christian KLN TV, nice geezer, mate. Nice geezer, he does really good on the podcast. He knows everything. I don't know how, but he knows everything about me. <laughs> he's all right. I like Christian, he's all right. Marvin Herbert, another one. Uh, he's all right, Marvin. Uh, he tells a few lies here and there, but that's Marvin. He ain't got to wear no makeup, they reckon, to go on a Star Wars. You look at him, you know why. <laughs> ah, dear, you missed him. Mr. Atwood is a good friend of mine. Sean Atwood, nice guy. He was took off um, uh, off a podcast. Uh, why, I don't know. The guy's a nice guy, mate. He's nice to talk to. He knows everybody there is to know, and that's it, mate. He's a nice fellow, Sean Atwood. I like him, mate. And uh, we, we, you know, there's loads of people out there. There's loads of people. There's Mark. There's, I mean, Craig, 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 mate. Oh, wait. Me and him are white, nice fellas, mate. He's done a bit of bird, Craig, over in the island, I think it was, or something like that, Germany or whatever. I'm not quite sure. Nicest guy you could ever meet. Proper nice, proper gentleman, mate. Proper help you out. Honestly, this guy, for the last couple of years, Keep sending me wine. I don't even fucking drink. <laughs> he keeps sending me bottles of wine. I don't even fucking drink. He keeps sending me wine. But I give him away and people will push. No, I don't, I don't, I don't. I do drink it. He's a nice fellow, mate. And uh, he's got a, he, he's, he loves his son. And he's, uh, he don't want nothing to happen to his son. He, don't, he keeps his son away from any problems, which is good. And uh, he's a nice, nice geezer, Craig. And I want him to... Um, uh, like Craig, Craig, I'll get mixed up with his names, don't have a go at me, mate. He knows what I'm talking about. Uh, you've got Martin Weller. Martin Weller, nice fella. Tells more lies than a cheap Glock. Ah, <laughs> oh, Martin, I love you, Martin. But he's the, he, listen, this geezer, he's, he's mustard, mate. He's the best guy he could ever meet. He's another guy he could ever meet. He's a nice guy. He looks after me when I come out of prison. He looks after me and, uh, and that's more important than anything, mate. People look after you. You know, you've got to give them, uh, you know, the best. And he is the best, mate. You know, and, and, and I appreciate what he's done with me. Milo, same person. Looked after me, mate, when I needed help. When I needed help. Um, but uh, my mate, Martin Weller. Um, I went to Martin Weller to collect the debt. And all of a sudden, I found out who he was. He found out who I was. And we come pals. Mad, isn't it? I've known him years. So I say years. I've known him what, 30 years, maybe more than that, when he used to run the clubs, get in the clubs, you know, and uh, he had long hair, I don't think he's gay, <laughs> definitely ain't gay, no, he's got no hair, no, he's as bald as they come, but he's a nice, nice guy, mate, anybody know him, Martin Weller, um, I'm behind him, 100%, always, um, people must know that, okay, and if you're watching my podcast, he's a nice, nice guy, um, I've got lots of people that I can say hello to, I've uh, got my sister Dinah, my brother Keith, my Bobby, my Jackie. Some don't talk to me, some do, but I love them all, yeah? And uh, anyway, this is Rail.